Hello everyone and welcome to Owl as a Totem. Owls are actually a lot like dogs in that each species has its own very distinct personality. So, you know, you would never confuse the behavior of a Lab or a German Shepherd with a Chihuahua, for example. So it is with owls, where each owl species has a very different way of being. So while this video will really cover what it means to be an owl person in general, and it should answer a lot of your questions, if you have a specific interest in a particular kind of owl and want to know what that kind of owl means for you, then please feel free to contact me directly for a reading on the subject. So, the owl people, uh, well, they're the ones that are going to make you a little uncomfortable. Um, it's not that they're not warm, fuzzy, wonderful people on the inside. In fact, they're actually quite sweet and vulnerable. It's that in the same way that an owl is specially adapted to have the ability to see and hear their prey, uh, in fact they have this amazing visual capacity where their irises can adjust from microscopic to telescopic focus in microseconds and it's also specially adapted to catch any kind of motion and their hearing is phenomenal. In that same way, owl people are also able to catch a lot of things that other people don't. So the exceptional vision of the owl makes owl people very clairvoyant. They can really see what you're trying to hide. And uh, if you ask a body language expert, they'll tell you that the mouth can lie, but the body is always going to give you away in some small fashion. And now remember, owl's vision is highly attuned to motion. So an owl person is going to find that one little cue, that one little finger twitch or wrinkle of your nose or uh, way you look away when you're asked a question and they're going to seize on that and they're going to know it means that you're concealing something and they'll probably have some little vision pop in their head about exactly what that is. Um, with the hearing, this makes them very clairaudient as well. So you may be saying one thing, but what they're really hearing is not what you're saying. What they're hearing is everything you're trying to conceal. And because owl is a bird associated with darkness, much of what we're trying to conceal is, is the darkness in our own spirits, our, our guilt, our shame, the things we don't want other people to see or know about. An owl person is just going to hone in on that. So when you meet an owl person, even if you don't know on a conscious level that these are the abilities that they have, a part of you is going to sense it and you will probably react accordingly, uh, maybe shying away from the owl person, trying to avoid them. Um, it's like a uh, predator and prey relationship. Owl is a predator totem, and people who maybe do not want their secrets revealed are therefore their prey, and they will find a way to get away from the predator, to get away from the owl. So it's actually very difficult for owl people to make good, lasting friendships. Again, not because they're not really warm, wonderful people, uh, but because to be friends with an owl person, you have to be a very confident personality. Um, you have to really not care that they can see all the things you have to hide, or you have to have come to a certain place of peace with these things. But being around somebody who can see your inner workings all the time, that can get old. So again, it is a very special person who will develop a lasting relationship with the owl person and hopefully benefit from their wisdom. Now owl people have um, another adaptation uh, that goes with being an owl uh, person. Owls have a special fringe on their wings that allows them to fly in utter silence. And so owl people are actually at their best when they are listening silently. Um, there is a lot of love and compassion to be found in silence, and learning this is part of the owl person's journey. When you can see and hear so much of what's going on in somebody, the tendency of an immature individual is to, you know, feed the ego a little here, like, ha ha ha, look what I can see that, that uh, you were trying to hide. Um, and an immature owl person will sometimes 
take what they know and use it to wound somebody or even if they think they're trying to help them they're not doing so nicely they're trying to tell the person how they need to change based on the owl person's understanding not by helping that person come to an understanding through what the owl person knows and so part of their journey is learning to listen to wait until they have all the pieces of the puzzle. Just because an owl person knows something doesn't mean that they know everything, though they may sometimes jump the gun. Uh, remember, it's like he's putting together a puzzle. When you get pieces of information about a person, that's great, but unless you know what the whole picture is, you might not want to act on just those little pieces. So when an owl person learns how to listen and be patient, then they make the most wonderful understanding friends and healers and teachers because they use what they know about somebody what they can understand and they offer it as hey I can see that you're struggling you know I would love to be your shoulder or how can I help you become a better you most of us hunger our whole lives for somebody who can really just listen to us as we pour our heart out who can really hear us and then who can sit without judgment and reflect on these things and help us understand them. That is something that a mature owl person is capable of doing. It is a, a really amazing gift. Now owls, uh, some build nests, some don't, some settle down with a partner, some don't, and uh, the owl people therefore are very restless. They, they always have a hunger to, to move around or to travel, if not physically, mentally. They've always got to be learning something new. They've got to be traveling mentally, again, if not physically. And so when it comes to meeting someone, while most of them would really love a partner with whom to settle down, they're afraid of commitment on a, a very deep, very visceral level they fear that somebody else will impose their needs upon the owl person and restrict them in some way, whether that's by forcing them to stay home when they really want to travel around, or by frowning on the things the owl person chooses to study and then making the owl person feel like maybe they need to be a little more quote-unquote normal. Owl people are very unique, very different. So what will happen is if they can give themselves permission to accept themselves for who they are, for the wonderful, uh, unique person that they are, usually they will meet someone who will celebrate that. Basically, when they realize they don't have to change for someone, they'll meet someone for whom they don't have to change. Now, all people are very emotional, though you won't see the emotion. They're related to the moon. The moon controls our emotions. So the owl people have crazy, crazy mood swings. But the reason you won't see it is because they're also so incredibly analytical. So the second they start to feel something, they're asking, well, why do I feel this? Should I feel this? Is this appropriate? And they'll drive themselves a little nuts. But they're not usually going to be the big drama queens that you see elsewhere. They're also emotional sponges. They will pick up everybody else's emotions. This can also make them a little stressed out, which is why owl people really need a lot of time alone because they're so susceptible to picking up other people's stuff and because they're going to pick up all the little white lies that we tell, all the little deceits we tell ourselves. Um, it's not a big deal for most of us, but if you're somebody who spots that every single time, it can get a little annoying. And so owl people really need time off. Uh, again, it's not because they don't love other people. It's because they are just so hyper aware and so sensitive that if they don't get that time by themselves, they're going to lose themselves. Now, the tie to the moon uh, also makes them very, very creative. Uh, owl people, when they produce something, it will be epic. It will make you feel. It will make you think it will make you really ponder and part of this is because owl people have this prodigious ability to understand the greater cosmic mysteries of the universe in a way that most of us if we even attempted it we would get a headache so when they put their heart and soul into creating something inevitably these themes will come through and you'll just be blown away the downside of this is that owl people really want to be able to 
uh, make you understand what it is that they're feeling and experiencing and learning. And these are very difficult themes to express creatively in a way that other people can understand. And so our people will often take a very long time creating something because they're really attempting to get all of that information into this project and that is not easy to do. And they'll feel like they're not satisfactorily getting themselves out there. Uh, all people have a deep fear of being misunderstood and this is actually grounded in reality because most of the concepts that make sense to them, for the rest of us it just goes right over our heads. Now lastly, the owls uh, swallow their prey whole, which is really quite lovely until you have to clean up the mess. When an owl swallows its prey whole, they uh, regurgitate the undigestible parts, like the bones, the fur, the skin, the teeth, whatever, um, in these little pellets, which is why back when Harry Potter was so popular and everybody thought, ooh, owl, I want one, uh, after a couple of weeks they found pellets all over their house and they gave the owls back. So, for an owl person, this does not represent giving them back. Don't get rid of your owl person, they're wonderful. Um, what it means is, first off, owl people can digest concepts that, again, most of us would just have no clue. My mother is an owl person and some of the stuff she talks about just blows my mind. If I really sit and tune in, I can get it but um, it's not just listening to somebody chat about the weather or the latest gossip. It's, it's really big impressive stuff, really huge cosmic concepts. So there's that, but also it represents when you get rid of all the parts you can't digest, it represents letting go of the things in your life that don't serve you, uh, releasing things that have outlived their usefulness. Some of these things are easy to let go of, some of them aren't. Owl people tend to lose quite a bit in their lives and what makes it difficult to be an owl person is that so much of their development comes through moving through loss, coping with grief. Oftentimes they will lose people who matter so much to them, whom they love so much because in some way even though they loved this person, the person was holding them back from becoming their highest self. And obviously this is very stressful, it isn't easy. So owl is not one of the uh, easy breezy life paths to have, but it is one of the ones, the most beautiful spiritual development. So challenging, yes, but the warmth and love and compassion and understanding that comes out of those challenges is simply phenomenal. Remember, owl people are here to listen and support on some level. And it is very difficult to listen and support in the way that owl people have to do so. If you haven't experienced some of the pain, um, some of the heartbreak, some of the loss that um, you're, the person you're listening to has experienced. So your, your finest ability to help comes from having had to receive some of that help yourself because you've gone through the same thing. So. Yeah, challenging life path, but really, really quite incredible. If you have an owl person as a friend, uh, first off, kudos to you because it means that you've got your stuff together, the, uh, you've, you're confident and don't feel like you need to uh, hide any skeletons in your personal closet. Uh, and also, again, you've got a really great teacher, a really great friend on hand, and probably somebody who will keep your intellect just constantly stimulated. Now again, if there's a particular kind of owl in which you're interested, uh, please feel free to let me know. I would love to do the interpretation for you. And if not, I hope this has answered your questions about what it means to be an owl person. Cheers, my darlings. Have a wonderful day.